Hello, good evening, and welcome. You've just entered the arena, and I'm Michael Corrin. And good lord, it's the most repugnant and shocking political scandal since Louis Napoleon carried out his coup in 1851 and President Nixon made a vicarious visit to Watergate. Yeah, a few low-ranking Tories, totally unknown to anybody around the Prime Minister, may or may not have made some phone calls to potential Liberal voters, giving them false directions for polling booths. And presumably those voters were so stupid, old or physically handicapped they couldn't find the real place to vote and just span around in sad confusion for hours on end. Good. Uh, seriously, it defies belief. Not that it may have happened, but that the consensus media is pretending that this is particularly important. Look, you know this. Politics is a dirty business. And, well, nobody knows this better, actually, than politicians and journalists. Yet these are the very two groups being most dishonest about the whole thing. Look, let's give some context here. A leading Liberal MP once said in the House of Commons that because of the rise of the Reform Party, there were clan-like crosses burning all over Canada. It was an utter lie. Stockwell Day, one of the kindest, cleanest, and as it happens, most pro-Jewish men you could ever meet, was accused of being a Holocaust denier and an anti-Semite. Tory candidates who dared to suggest that marriage was the union of one man and one woman were targeted by the media as being hateful of gays and wanting to make homosexuality illegal. In this, some of the same journalists currently attacking the Conservatives over the so-called robocall scandal were taking their information, please listen, directly from a radical group called EGAL, Equality for Gays and Lesbians Everywhere, and even telephoning them to find out which Tory to attack. Conservative politicians are being called, what, racist, Islamophobe, fascist, homophobe, anti-Semite, the list goes on. Their private lives have been invaded, their families have been abused, their motives questioned, and their characters trashed again by some of the same politicians and journalists now so upset and hurt by a few silly phone calls. Justin Trudeau, super brat, was involved in the WikiLeaks scandal to a degree that demands intense inv investigation right now. Now, look, this is genuinely serious. A minister of the Crown was personally attacked, his personal life exposed and lied about because of the nastiness and thuggery of a paid Liberal staffer who has since been forced to resign. Now, while Bob Ray was sincere, I think, if a bit pompous, in his apology, little Justin has some explaining to do, perhaps at an official level. But this is nothing compared to the regular physical intimidation conservative politicians and activists have to face as they campaign. Believe me, labor union heavies, leftist fanatics, student radicals have all occupied offices, shouted down Tory opponents, prevented free speech. When has a liberal or new Democrat faced such harassment? So please, please, in the name of integrity and sheer common sense, stop this painfully dishonest campaign and the pretend pain and shock. It doesn't convince anyone at all, and it lowers even further the reputation of those who are supposed to know better. Well, not little Justin, of course, because, frankly, he doesn't know very much at all.